Okay, welcome to the very first Against All Odds podcast where Mimi and I record this thing completely naked. <laughs> Unless you're watching us on YouTube and then you're saying that we're we're not naked. Definitely. I just always wanted to say that because you're just listening. I just, I don't know. <laughs> so, roll intro. Roll intro. <laughs> I think a great place for us to start would be how this whole podcast came to be. Yeah. And the name or like the even name, the idea everything. of it too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if we go back about a week or two, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Shelly had a restless night. Oh, by the way, I call him Shelly. If any of you guys don't know that. Yeah. My name is Matt Sheldon and Mimi calls me Shelly. I call him Shelly. I've never in my life once <laughs> ever called him Matt. Yeah. Fun fact. Fun fact. Anyways, um, so a couple weeks ago, he had kind of a restless night, and he spent the majority of that night planning what would be our podcast. And he, I don't know if it's recently got into podcasts. Is this a recent thing? Off and on for a couple of years. Yeah, off and on. Same with me. I, I definitely lately have gotten into them more. So he just had this idea that, you know, why don't we just talk? And it doesn't have to be just about soccer. It doesn't have to be about design necessarily it just it's a way for our listeners to kind of escape their lives and just kind of get to know us better yeah because that was exactly it. i mean i literally could not sleep one night stayed up super late mm -hmm. for whatever reason i think it's because i just had a couple of days off to let my body heal and i can't sleep when i when i don't you exercise probably had like three coffees yeah, maybe had a couple <laughs> coffees and i just couldn't sleep so i was like you know what i'm gonna listen to like a podcast and then I started listening to like the H3 podcast. I started listening to other stuff like Gary mm -hmm. V podcast. And I got so into it, like listening. And it, it didn't help my sleep, but I was just like <laughs> super into it listening. I got transfixed by it. And I'm like, you know what? I guarantee there's a ton of people out there that would love to just hear more behind the scenes about the videos, behind the scenes about our lives, but about us, just stuff like that. So I just re like for four hours, stayed up to like four or 5 a.m., just started mm -hmm. researching how to make a podcast, researching microphones. I bought a couple of microphones, bought pop filters, did all this stuff. And then you yeah, literally- Yeah, he went to town and I woke up to all these texts. So like, I was like, I guess I'm committed to this. <laughs> I was like, yeah, like 10 texts on the last one. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this. Are you in? <laughs> it's like, I don't think I have a choice at this point. And then so the first thing after that was like, okay, let's come up with a name. Yeah, so I'm super- super into branding, I would say. I love that whole aspect. Like the second he thought of Become Elite, I was like, all right, logo, I got this. Yeah. And I just started and you doodling. Did. You made yeah, the logo. Exactly. And I, just like you get kind of transfixed on something, that's what I get kind of obsessed with is just like the logo, uh, the marketing, advertising, all that. So we just immediately started thinking of titles and I sent him over my top, I would say 10 maybe. Yeah. And this one just kind of stood out to him. Yeah, because I liked it because it was one thing that you said was like, yeah, it's going to be even against all odds that we're even in the same city to mm -hmm. be able to record this. And I was like, I love that. Just the whole idea of you have a lot of odds or expectations about you that, you, you know, criticism or whatever. And not only in soccer, but in weightlifting or business or our relationship or anything. Mm -hmm. It is kind of against all odds that everything has worked out the way that it's worked out. Exactly. And I yeah. never thought that I would even be in the same city with you for more or than a month. In New Zealand for that matter. Yeah. So, <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> so speaking of that, so you just flew in five, six days ago. It's almost been a week, huh? Yeah, I've kind of lost track. And how's that first week been transitioning into New Zealand? It's been interesting. Yeah. The weather has definitely keep, kept me on my toes. Hmm. Uh, the second I flew in, it was I thought it was beautiful weather. It was still pretty windy, but it wasn't bad it wasn't bad weather it wasn't raining or anything it was still sunny so we did a whole tour of the city and it was beautiful we saw pretty much everything and the next day was his game i believe right the next day the next day yeah and then i talked to some friends down here and they actually said that it was the worst weather they've ever experienced and they've lived here for decades <laughs> so i felt pretty honored and um, that was rough because i had to film his game he had to play in it it just it was awful it looked like he was playing in a hurricane or something yeah. Yeah, I'll, if for the YouTube watchers right now, the people who are watching this on YouTube, I'll overlay some footage right now. But it was a monsoon. Like, I have never played in that hard of rain or wind like that. I was so cold. And it came so unexpectedly as well. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't prepared. I didn't have even white 
um, skins or Under Armour or anything, like a compression top. Yeah. I didn't bring tights. And the whole team was completely unprepared. And we were all freezing. And that was, that was I still right now do not understand how, why or how they did not cancel that game. Well, I was going to ask you, have you ever had a game been canceled because of like elements? Well, well, most of the time we play over the summer. I mean, this is the first time in a long time I've played over the winter of a country. You know? But I mean, even in like St. Louis, there were pretty bad conditions too. Uh, in preseason, and sometimes we'd cancel trainings in preseason, but mm-hmm. never we've never really had like a poor game. Like I, I don't even think I wore an under like compression top in any of the games really because it's always been kind of nicer weather that's crazy yeah and then before that you know i was in orange county california so no need for any bad weather conditions or tops there yeah and then in germany i mean it was bad with the snow but we didn't have i think honestly i'd rather play in the snow where it's the conditions like that versus where a torrential downpour with yeah, the wind it was bad because like there was this one play where he's like running up the side he was playing wing and he had the ball and he I saw him just pick his head up to see where he could just, you know, cross it in. And then this huge gust of wind came like 30 miles an hour. And I was like, there's no way he can even kick this. And I could just see it like kind of in your face. You were just like, oh, my God. What it was, do I do? Yeah, I was defeated. Definitely. Yeah. But it's, the weather's turned around, picked up. Went Beautiful. To, went to Macro Beach the other day, mm-hmm. which was awesome. The windy, but awesome. It's so windy. <laughs> we started at the bottom. It's beautiful. So you get to this like rocky beach. And it's only about 30 minutes away from our place, which is crazy because it's like technically on the other side of the island, I yeah. guess. But, Literally across the entire yeah, island. So we drove yeah. across in just a couple minutes. And then we started at this beach and we walked straight up this like vertical, grassy, muddy hill, just straight up. And then at the very top, it was just like a cliff, just straight dropped down. And there's sheep all over it. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. The water here is just so, it's such a teal color. It is. It versus really California. Is. In California, it's got amazing beaches and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This water kind of reminded me of like the pools that you see in Big Sur. Mm-hmm. Like they're, they're really rare, but you'll see like a little pool of like turquoise or aqua yeah. and it was the whole ocean yeah i'm like what but i'm excited that you're here i'm i'm Me definitely too. happier just because it's not you know hornsby's have been amazing love the hornsby's love tyler love hanging out with everybody fran mike cody luca but um you know it's definitely nice to have a, a part of home here mm-hmm. so and, and, and one, of, <laughs> one of the big things too is like i've talked about in a lot of the vlogs is like when you're traveling and you're seeing these amazing views it doesn't really seem real or you, you, it doesn't seem like a real experience unless you're experiencing it with somebody else. Yeah, you, know? you say that a lot. You know, it's just it's not the same experiencing things yeah. when you don't have someone to share. Because it with. like, you know, I'll see an amazing view and I the first thing I'm like trying to like look at this, like trying to share the experience. And then like you can take a picture and send it, but it's not the same. Like you saw yeah. pictures of Wellington. Yeah, it's not a the few same. days before I came, he was so excited. He ran around like the entire city, <laughs> just literally the whole city, and took all these videos and pictures just to send to me and show me. But it's still hard to like you know get my bearings from just the pictures and everything. Yeah. But and uh, and I, I did that like a main reason for that is because we're actually moving to get our own apartment in a week, mm-hmm. actually a week and a day. Which one are we going to first? We're going to go to the one right downtown. Okay. So that's like right on Lawrence Street or something. Yeah, it's a really good location, yeah. right? But I think Courtney Street right is like the main one. Right next to Courtney Place, yeah. Courtney Place. Which is like a main street in mm-hmm. downtown Wellington. Lots so it's going to be in a, in walking distance to everything. And Wellington is literally walking distance yeah, everywhere. Yeah, I was going to say that doesn't really say much. But um, <laughs> no, it's an amazing location. And so this is going to be a big moment for us because we've gone from basically apartment with teammates to apartment with teammates to a parents' houses. And we've never actually had our own place yeah i would say the closest we've had to that would be just like an airbnb for a couple days when we travel and but it's it never been for an extended period of time yeah and it doesn't feel like it because when you're traveling like when we're in budapest when we're over in czech republic yeah you don't have a closet you keep everything in your suitcase mm-hmm. you live out of it you can't really buy food it's and more like a hotel as as well you don't get that like oh we're finally living together like a homey vibe because mm-hmm. you wake up and immediately go outside go see cafes you're walking around all day and then you just come home and crash because we, you know, we would walk 30,000 steps yeah. around the city. I don't, honestly, we've stayed in a lot of Airbnbs around Europe and I don't remember like really doing anything in a single one of them. Yeah. I don't even was. really remember the sleeping part because you're just so tired. You just <laughs> fall crash. asleep and then leave again. 100%. And so this is going to be like the first time where it's, we'll have like, I'm, I call it like an, our own apartment, but we're still not even leasing it. Yeah. But um, it's, it's going to be exciting. So the Hornsby's right now are over in Fiji. Mm-hmm. We say Americans call it Fiji. We call it Fiji, but they think that we 
uh, slur it and speed it up too much. Yeah. So they say Fiji. Yeah. And now Shelly's starting to say that because he thinks he's Kiwi all of a sudden. <laughs> well, it's hard because every time I would say, yeah, so you guys are going to Fiji. They're like, it's Fiji. And then you just start hearing it and hearing it. And you're like, you know what? I don't want to sound dumb. See, this know? is like me when I studied abroad in England and I started calling <laughs> things like oatmeal porridge. And you would get so mad at me when I would do that. You're like, what? What is it? You like mean porridge. oatmeal? Yeah, so you did that all the time. And yeah. I, I just hear you every day talking about Fiji. <laughs> yeah, so they're they're over in Fiji. Oh, my God. They're over in Fiji for the next week or so, next mm-hmm. two weeks. Um, so we're at the Horns Beach place right now. They're kind of to allow us just to stay here. And mm-hmm. then when they're coming back on the next weekend, we'll be tr- transitioning to that new place. We're going to be there for a couple of weeks. And then actually um, the grandma of Tyler Hornsby is who is awesome die she lives she lit what she's amazing she's awesome yeah she's great but she lives right over at oriental bay with an amazing view of wellington and the harbor Mm -hmm. and she said she's going abroad um where would she is australia i thought it was africa (laughs) it's australia we forgot she's a well-traveled woman yeah we talked to her a lot about her travels so she's going somewhere cool she's going somewhere very cool yeah and she's going there for pretty much the whole month of august so then we'll have she just like you know instead of paying for your place we'll just come over and you can stay in my apartment with this amazing view oh my it's incredible we went over there for a dinner party the other day yeah and basically wellington is there's one big harbor in wellington kind of like a c shape mm-hmm. as you like to call it and um we're staying right now up high basically up in the hills of Crory. And it's a beautiful um, neighborhood town up here. And there's trees everywhere. It's gorgeous. We're up high. And then the next apartment we have is right in downtown, which is perfect. And then this third one is going to be right on the beach on the other side of that harbor. So we're getting like the best of all All three worlds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm really excited for what's to come. Um, whenever you're here too, the vlogs always get better. I get more content. Yeah, we're going to be vlogging. You it's have your own YouTube channel, so you're going to get content. We've been just working every single day now, yeah. all day. So it's been fun. I've I'm, I'm really been enjoying everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, the next steps following that, who knows? Like, I, I definitely want to go play in a fully professional league. I really want to play in America in front of friends and family. So that's definitely going to be on my radar. But like I said, you can never really plan too far. I know. People always comment like, you should play here. You should play here. It's yeah. like, trust me, if he had a choice, <laughs> Yeah, if I could choose, choose where I wanted to play, I'd play, you know, right in California or L.A. Exactly. Or, um, but yeah, I mean, these experiences going abroad has been pretty awesome. So uh, I mentioned your YouTube channel a little bit, Mimi. Mm-hmm. But do you want to just kind of update people who might not know? Like, they might just be wondering, so what are you going to be doing here for the next two months like as terms of work or whatever yeah so i have a couple platforms right now i have my website mimi com. shameless plug <laughs> and i have my youtube channel that i started a little while ago but i never mimi estelle yes mimi estelle but i never got to commit to it 100 percent. and um i also have my instagram all three go follow mm-hmm. um But basically, I just, I'm obsessed with interior design. I thought that's what I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to go to design school. I thought I wanted to pursue that route, become a designer, you know, open a design firm or work for a prestigious one. And for the last year, I was actually working at an interior design firm in San Diego. And I kind of realized that my priorities changed. And I realized that for me, success is freedom, like you say a lot. Yeah. And for me to truly enjoy my life and enjoy design, it had to be on my own terms. And I just, I think I was just too independent for it, to be honest. Yeah. No, I mean, working nine to five is, is tough. I mean, a lot it of you is. guys probably listening. Um, I don't know the percentage of you who have worked a nine to five job. And for some people, they love that, you know, the stability. My sister is like one. She yeah. loves that where she has a boss. Mm-hmm. Um, it's stable. She knows what she's going to get paid every month. But I just, you know, I think for us both, it's hard mm-hmm. to do that. And so if any opportunity where we don't have to do a nine to five we kind of jump on it. Exactly. And for me too, it's traveling is a huge part of it. And I told you, I mean, besides you, I don't like commitment. Really, <laughs> I don't, it, it stresses me out to be committed to a job or be committed to a company or even your own company where you're stuck in one place. And I just felt like at this age, I'm only 22. I'm pretty young. You're only what, 25. Oh, cool. Don't even know how old I am. <laughs> It's it, once you get up there, it's hard to keep track. Wow, twenty five, you're twenty five, but I'm actually turning twenty six in 26. a month. I know that's old. And then for a week there, about you're going to be twenty six, and I'm going to be twenty two. That doesn't even sound any that bad anymore, to be honest. Like when yeah, you when were I was eight, eighteen, that when was you were worse. when you were eighteen, I was twenty two. Yeah, that sounded. I was like, ugh. 
But when everyone's like patting me on the back, but like, now it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but now it's like 22 and 26. It's kind of like it's getting closer. Next 23 and 27, as you get older and older, yeah, but, it kind of freaks me out though, to be honest. But we're three years apart. I know, I just don't want you to get old. <laughs> <laughs> makes me sad what was i saying about that why was i saying ages because oh yeah just at this point in my life i just don't really see a need for that concrete stability where i can't yeah. express myself and pursue all these ventures that i want to do and i feel like right now because my only, only responsibility is me and your only responsibility is you i mean this is the perfect opportunity to do it like yeah. the perfect time like what like we said opportunities like since i have such a crazy lifestyle you know like if i was tied down in a city then it'd be like, oh, you know, you'd feel more obligation or you'd feel better to be tied down in a city as well, that same exactly. city. But since I'm jumping all around, you're like, you know what? I kind of want to jump all around. And that's awesome for me because if we were talking about it, I was so excited when you were like, you know what? No, I want to go a year, really devote time into this, you know, my Mimi Estelle business and follow you around yeah. and kind of like do it wherever. I'm like, that's awesome because the worst part about playing pro is that loneliness wherever you go. And just like I said, not being able to experience all mm -hmm. these new experiences and then looking back on Facebook and seeing Mimi hang out with your friends and your family hanging out together and everything, and you just feel like you're missing out. Yeah, I think we should backtrack a little bit on that and maybe talk about that moment when I did text you because oh, yeah. for the last year working at this job, I call it a nine to five, I worked 10 to 5.30, but you know, whatever, <laughs> same thing. <laughs> um, the but, 10 to 5.30 just doesn't roll yeah, off the tongue Yeah, I have well. a 10 to 5.30, <laughs> what are you talking that about? That 10 to 5.30 job just <laughs> it gets you. Um, but I would use every spare minute that I had to work on these platforms, to work on my Instagram, to work on my website, to work on my YouTube. And it just got to the point where I was at work and I would pray for the moment that I could go to the bathroom so that I could post an Instagram mm -hmm. or that, you know, so I could talk to someone about a promotion. My priorities had shifted completely to these platforms that I started and it killed me every single day to, I woke up at like six or 5.30 in the morning and I would just sit at my table the whole morning working on these posts, working on editing these videos and stuff. And the second I had to, you know, get dressed and head out to work, it made me really sad because mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to be focusing my time on. Yeah. And so I knew that something was wrong. I knew that it wasn't right because I could see, like I could visualize where those platforms were going to go. And with the, my job that I had, I just didn't see a future that I was going to enjoy. Yeah. And I mean, to do that part time and to build up the following of what, 5,000 plus people that follow your page mm -hmm. um you have a loyal following going to your website reading your blog posts it's like imagine what a year and that was with a year of doing that part-time yeah. imagine a year of doing that full-time see and shelly's a huge number guy so he's you know he'll look at it and say okay if you dedicated this much of your time for a year and you got this many followers imagine what you can do if you dedicate 100 percent of your time yeah. for just six months you know yeah. and he can actually visualize these numbers whereas i'm kind of just seeing it more visually and i'm just looking at it like I can grow these platforms. Like I want to do this, like I want to do this. I want to create all these different things. And I mean, there's even like other businesses I'm interested in doing and starting. And I have this, I have this whole vision yeah. and I just, it got to the point where I just texted him one day on my lunch break. And I don't remember exactly what I said to you, but I was kind of just like, you just were, you, you sounded defeated with I your just, job. I spewed everything. And I just told him too. I was so scared because I felt like I felt like it was bad. I was disappointed in myself because I thought that I had given up on my dream. But then I realized after texting you that I didn't give up on my dream. I just changed my dream. Yeah. I changed my goal. And I think that that's fine to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And I mean, going just like talking about like starting a business and all that stuff with that part time being, um, you know, since 2015, my whole job has been playing soccer. And I really started this because because you know, people think that when you're a pro, you train eight hours a day. You really train an hour and a half a day. Yeah. Every single day, maybe an hour in the gym. It's quality with, over quantity. And it's so you're basically, and then if you count the locker room time, lunch and breakfast with your team, you're looking at four or five hour days, starting at eight, ending at 12, maybe one the latest if you have some rehab to do. Mm -hmm. So I would have these afternoons from like one all the way until you go to bed at night. I'm like, what do I do? You know, I see teammates um, watching Netflix. I see people playing video games. Yeah, and we, I mean, we've seen everything. So we've lived with all different types of people and there's really motivated ones. There's ones who 
are fine with their soccer and that they're fine with that being it you know yeah. and and for I, you, I don't know wasn't. i was i for me i just like putting a lot of pressure i like starting something i needed to be doing something or else i go crazy i can't i can't watch netflix um for too long or I, I just feel like i need to be working on something yeah we start like a documentary when we have time at night and then by like 10 minutes then we're both like hey i gotta edit this yeah, i want to work <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do yeah. i have to so that's just like that was kind of like Luckily, I, ha- I was in a really good position mm-hmm. where soccer was only taking up four hours on, out of my day, and then I could devote all this time. And I saw how successful you could grow a platform, and what you know you could turn that into a living, into a job. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what, Mimi, you're literally are on the stages that I was in right before that big breakthrough where it really starts to pay off. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen. I'm excited to see for the next year, and uh, it should be really, really fun. Though it's yeah. it's always fun working on that, like your own stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And my hope too is that I mean, even if you're not interested in design or whatever I do, I hope that it is inspiring in some way to just do what you want and commit to it. Because yeah. it takes a lot of hard work. Yeah, you can't just do this no. half-ass it and no, I've se- make a living. I've seen you wake up like at 8 a.m. and like work until past 8 p.m. 12 o'clock at night last night or yesterday. We woke up at seven and we yeah. didn't stop working until like midnight. I, on mine was till one you crashed oh i was like i gotta upload this because our wi-fi but is I woke, so slow I, I woke up that hour earlier yeah, you know i was grinding sure sure <laughs> that's that competitiveness speaking of competitiveness sheldon tweedy was in town we had a lot of competitions juggling competitions was which i lost and was not happy about that and uh, i did win the race but just one thing that you know i kind of realized and I was, it's funny because when we were doing that juggling competition we were playing I was getting so mad. Like I, I just, when I get mad and competitive, I get very quiet. I just want to win. But then at the same time, I have two cameras on me, and I don't want to be a jerk, you know. Yeah. But I, I was just so frustrated. Not, you know, mad at Sheldon. And that's we're playing. I'm just mad at myself that I wasn't performing how I wanted to. And it got so bad that even after the fact, like Sheldon was like, "Hey, can I post that? Like, can I post me winning on YouTube?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course you won. You earned it." But it just kind of shows like I hated I it, that was a very frustrating time with it and I'm so glad I, be, oh, I at least won the race to give me something but I will definitely be training next time we come in and when we play that soccer tennis so I mm-hmm. will win next time yeah. I, will, I promise like well, I you will know that win. competitiveness has probably helped you though yeah 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 I mean you make everything a competition like <laughs> when you're eating your food it's like a competition yeah <laughs> How, you know you gotta be the first one to finish the food mm-hmm. um, but you met Sheldon I did and you met his new girlfriend Lucy she's great briefly just for a couple hours before yeah I kind of just got to spend time with them in the car really to the airport because when I flew in my bags didn't fly in with me so we were gonna go get lunch all together and hang out and meet each other but my little hiccup it kind of took up some time Always but they're great hiccups. they're great people yeah they are great no I love Sheldon and Lucy Lucy's mm-hmm. just so sweet too mm-hmm. it's awesome um, but it was awesome for him to come in. It was like perfect timing, you know, cause he actually was like, yeah, I'm going to come. He wanted to come earlier, but my injury wasn't a hundred percent. I'm like, no, no. Cause I wanted to be a hundred percent when I played him in the soccer tennis and raced him, I did all these competitions. I wanted to be a hundred percent. So I kept on pushing it off until he was like, yeah. Um, uh, until I was, was like, yeah, I'm ready. And then he flew in. And then that's when pretty much a couple of days after that, you were like, can I'm going to fly on that Friday? I'm like, oh, perfect. That's, those, yeah, that I Friday overlaps. sooner than I planned. <laughs> yeah, because you were planning on being in San Diego until the yeah. end of July. Mm-hmm. But um, you just couldn't stay away from me, I guess. No, irresistible. <laughs> and then about races, you and I were supposed to race. And we are going to race. Yeah, I just don't want to like make you mad again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we were going to do the pretty much the exact same thing and you had this funny thing where it was like we would rig it yeah where i wanted to win. show me just like smoking him like we would just both start at the line and go and as the camera switches like mimi would be like 10 yards ahead of me and mm-hmm. just be and then it switches to the end line and then she's 10 yards ahead of me w- crossing the finish line can you handle I, that though fake losing i don't even know if i could fake lose <laughs> yeah see i feel like you wouldn't let me do that <laughs> i just change it slightly so that i win mm-hmm. he's always been so fast like even on his teams like in college i remember every time we get a new freshman that was supposed to be really fast the coach would be like all right we finally got someone faster than you shelly and then you'd race and you were always faster <laughs> yeah well there's just my coach i think just did that looking back on it i think he did it just to bring out like me getting mad yeah but especially as a freshman sophomore i was a little bit more timid i didn't know really what was going in i was competitive but i wasn't like that fiery like competitive. yeah and then as a senior this like freshman coming in you're yeah. like there's no way and they would <laughs> my coach would literally be like yeah teasing me oh we got this 
rapid freshman coming in. They, <laughs> we've got one. He's going to beat you. He's going to beat you. And then, you know, there'd all be all this hype about it. Then we'd race at the beginning of the year. And it was, it was definitely, definitely <laughs> funny. But people always ask, like, about speed, about genetics versus, like, you know, how fast you actually become. Mm-hmm. And it's a hard one because it's like, you know, I, I can see. Bold. Yeah, I think it's both too. And I can see all this hard work I've put in and see this power training and this um, this sprint training I've done, the plyometric training, that convert. But um, I definitely do have a sprinter's physique as well, just genetically. You yeah, know? he has really long legs. What is it, like narrow limbs? Yeah, and like smaller. <laughs> He's um... very aerodynamic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think like it's hard. I think genetically I am uh, predetermined to be a little bit more as a sprinter's physique. But having said that, I can't even just play soccer and not work at it in the gym, doing heavier power lifting. Yeah. Um, I, I, even, I mean, even in the off season, a lot of people will like bulk up or not care about cardio and you still, you like to keep your fitness up. Yeah. And so I think like that training combined with it, but it's hard. But I know, I 100% know that any single person can get faster. You know, Sheldon Tweedy is one. He's a very skinny guy. To get faster, he needs to add a little bit more muscle to have that power because he's got mm-hmm. the form. He's got a lot of the fast twitch muscle fibers, but now it's that power exerting into the ground. A lot of people are the exact opposite. They have the muscle, but they might have 10 extra pounds, 20 extra pounds holding mm-hmm. them, slowing them down. They need to slim down. They need to do all that stuff. So, you know, anybody can get faster. Yeah, if you're interested, there's a program on the Come Elite website. <laughs> uh, don't, don't plug my pro- speed program. <laughs> Uh, maybe he's plugging. You, you want to trip. You know that's where you're you, going you with wanna, it. You want an after-season trip over to Fiji or something. I do. Huh? <laughs> you know what? Actually, coming into this country, am I allowed to say this? What? But that I lied about when I came into the country. Yeah, we can talk about it. I don't think any uh, government officials are going to be listening to this podcast. If, if you they are, are, sorry. Better hit that like button. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so when you fly into New Zealand, like most countries, you have to show either a visa or an outbound ticket. And uh, but it's so weird because when I I heard that he screwed me over. <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, they didn't even ask me any questions. You're fine." So I roll up to LAX with my suitcase. I walk up to the baggage claim or the baggage what ticket check ticket, check in check in counter, and the guy didn't even say hi. He just said outbound ticket or visa, and I was like, "Me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> is there someone behind me? <laughs> like, you weren't supposed to ask me about that." Yeah. And so I told him, like, you know, my boyfriend's playing soccer. I kind of pulled the playoff card, which is really easy to use because we don't know usually when your season's going to end. Yeah, like the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So he said that that didn't matter. Uh, he must not have known your team or something. <laughs> I was like, come on, it's Matt Sheldon. <laughs> Waterside Karori. Come elite. They get like 100 fans a game. Yeah, so I had to, standing there in the airport, I had to buy a ticket out of New Zealand. And the cheapest one I could find, and the only country that would let me... Um, get a visa right then was Australia. Mm -hmm. So I have a ticket to Melbourne. If anybody wants it. (laughs) Yeah. uh, August 15th or something. And I I also have a visa for Australia. So maybe we'll be going there. (laughs) But it's so, because I worked so hard to get the visa into New Zealand, which was a piece of cake. It was literally like, are you a criminal? And I was like, no. Like, are you healthy? Yes. Do you have like $4,000 in the bank so that you can provide for yourself while you're in New Zealand? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, okay, yeah, here's a year long visa. But I got it. But then I was like, okay, there's like, you need, in all caps in the email, you need to bring this to the airport with you and show it to the check-in counter and to like the, the check-in gate before Yeah, so flying. that's the thing. So I had to buy a visa and buy my ticket at the check-in counter. And he said, you have to show this to the guys to get on the plane. Yeah. I get over there. No one's asking for my visa. I yeah. land in New Zealand. No one asks for my visa. I could have been anybody. Yeah. Like, well, that's what happened to me because I had that. I printed it out. I was like holding it the entire time. And literally, like, I'd hand my passport like, and my the visa. visa. <laughs> and they would just push away the visa, look at my passport, and be like, okay. And I never had to show my visa. So when you were asking about it, I never even got yeah. asked if I had an outbound flight. And so I, it was just a breeze. And yeah. so when you asked me, I'm like, no, nah, I never got checked. I never needed a flight. I never needed a visa. And then, <laughs> but that's always, always if, how okay, our life works. I always say that if there's a 50 50 where things could go right or wrong, for me, it will always go wrong. It's always that 50%. I am the most unlucky person ever. I don't know why. It, you, I, you know, I, at first, I really didn't believe in luck and unluckiness. But the more I've lived with you, the more <laughs> times I've seen you just get unlucky. We just unlucky. get caught up in really bad situations, especially traveling. <laughs> but it's never bad. It's, it's little things like it's a hiccup. It's not like a bad situation. I would say getting my passport, my wallet, my identification cards, my credit cards, my glasses... My plane ticket, I would say getting that stolen is 
more than a hiccup. But it's not terrible. It's not. <laughs> we managed. There, there can be a lot worse things to happen in life. Yeah, we managed. Yeah. Would you... I definitely would say I'm an optimist, but are, are you... I still struggle with you. Are you an optimist or a pessimist? What do you think you, you are? I'm like right in the middle. That's... Okay. I'm a realist. That's what pessimists say. That's what, what, my, that's what my mom says. And she's a <laughs> oh huge God, pessimist. Oh, God, no, I'm not like that. <laughs> mom, if you're I'm listening, like to, I love you, mom. <laughs> no, I... This is how I... I don't know if there's a word for this, but I get anxiety and I stress out about situations, but in my head, I know that it's going to work out. Okay. So I'm yeah, an, I, would, I would say I'm an optimist, but I would say that I'm like a stressed out optimist. Yeah, I could see that. That's a very good way. You've, you have been nailing like descriptions or like something I know, like that right? lately. Yeah, I, that's 100%. I love making connections. Because you do every little thing. You stress out. I'm like, Mimi. I do. It's going to be okay. Well, see, it's so <laughs> frustrating for someone who stresses out to be with someone like you because you almost want someone to like bond with you over that like freak out. Yeah. And then you don't. It's like even little things like I was having this problem with my Amazon account. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh, like, it's not yeah. working. And then he's just sitting there like, it's okay. I was like, check again tomorrow. It'll he's like, be it'll fine. work out. It, it, that's what he says. It'll be fine. I'm like, Shelly, all my stuff got stolen. It'll be fine. It's like... Do, you can't just say that. <laughs> like, I know it'll be fine, but it's just, uh, yeah. that's always your go-to. I don't know if it's because you don't want to deal with it or talk about it or because... It's a little both. I definitely put stuff in my back of my mind if I don't want to deal with it. But I, if I can't control it, I mean, you can't really control it. Yeah, you always it, say that. So. Like, if there's nothing you can do about it right now, then don't worry about it. Yeah. And I am definitely good at just letting it go. But my dad, like, my dad's huge on, like, it will all work out. Like, any big thing that happened, I was like, he's like, don't worry. It's all going to work out. And so far yeah. in my life, everything has worked out. You know, knock on wood, but yeah, I definitely see like Chuck and you, and then Laura and me. I see why that dynamic works out? For people. Yeah, it's definitely funny. To balance it out. So we've now had two gym sessions down here yes. while we're down here. We got you set up on a free trial at my club, Kelburn. Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that and all of and my biggest pet peeve with New Zealand. Let me tell you, lack of insulation. Every so single building cold. is freezing. In our gym, I swear, it's just a warehouse. It's like multiple warehouses put together. There's it's not, not even, even a walls. warehouse. It's like a tin shed. Yeah, there's not even walls. It's just metal, <laughs> like metal something. Sheet metal. Sheet metal. It's just, it's crazy. Like we go into the cardio room immediately when we get there because we have to just get our body warm. And the first day I worked out, my toes were so numb that I couldn't even do cardio. I was like, this hurts. I can't feel any of my feet. After And that was after 10 minutes of cardio, that, like yeah, intense I, I, cardio. I like, yeah, I like intensely pedal on that bike and I couldn't yeah. feel anything. And I'm, and I don't, you like more of the cold weather, but you definitely get more cold. I hate the cold weather, but I definitely am a little bit warmer, but compared to a lot, like the general population. Fat. I get very, very cold very easily, and I hate being cold. So I Especially go. Especially when you're working out, we always talk about this. We want to sweat. Yeah. We want to have a good workout. We want to feel like we're. You've put in work, yeah, even though you don't need to sweat to have a good workout. Yeah, we talked about that. But it, it it's is a, that it's mental. an indication for us mentally that we yeah. did a good job, and it's hard when you walk out of there and you're like, "Well, I can wear these clothes tomorrow <laughs> because I didn't sweat one drop." We save a lot of money on laundry. <laughs> we do. We do. <laughs> but no, that's the thing. Is like I love and I and I don't sweat that much as it is mm -hmm. you know it could play in 100 degree weather in st louis over the summer with 100 percent humidity and after an intense training session where i run the same amount of miles do everything at the same speed as all my teammates yeah, you only go logged in on my thing and i'd have like a little ring of sweat and people are drenched in sweat mm -hmm. and i just i don't know i don't sweat that much i don't i don't get that hot and so here i'm you know, I'm so cold and my best workouts, I like break even, I feel like, where I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm at a good temperature. Yeah, I, I walked out of there today being like, all right, I feel good. Like nothing's numb. Yeah. I did good. <laughs> and so uh, we definitely are going to change yeah. gyms, especially because we're moving downtown. Yeah, so. we're going to just try to do, because it's great because in Europe you can do a lot of month to month, whereas in the US you have to make a commitment for like a year. Yeah. So we're just going to choose ones that are near our location. We're not in Europe though. We yeah, are I, keep, I keep associating, what is, what continent is New Zealand on? Oceania, oh, in Australia. No, actually, though. It's part of Oceania. Oceania is not a cotton huh? continent. Yeah, it is. Like uh, Asia and Oceania is like a, is like, like a continent altogether. Asia. N Australia. That's Australia and the like Oceania Islands and stuff like that. I thought it was just Australia. Well, then New Zealand. Most of the time, New Zealand, New Zealand is not even on a map. This is mind blowing. Yeah. Well, we're not in Europe, but hopefully we can but find some good. We drink tea good... and eat beans and toast every morning. So explain <laughs> that one. <laughs>
<laughs> but oh, we will find a gym and we will the number one thing i'm looking for i don't care what the equipment's like i just want it warm that's what i want i want warm yeah it's hard too because i've never been an advocate for gloves in the gym but like <laughs> you want to <laughs> it wear it. hurts to pick up these dumbbells it's literally because yeah imagine like oh your hand and it's sweaty and kind of like wet and then you grab onto this ice cold ice metal ice cold yeah and it's like that stinging numbing like numbness when you get in the shower and your hands are stinging well, and especially, that's what it feels this like this is one of those old gyms where everything is like that old metal yeah. like rusty metal it's not, so it's not rubber no coated mm -hmm. yeah and so that that'll be definitely you know i'm looking forward to get the new gym is when we go downtown we sound like such babies no i know and i swear though if you experience yeah. this <laughs> oh, it's not just the gym too it's like the, every single locker room is mm -hmm. like that so uninsulated it's just it's just a wall with nothing concrete floors um houses well, are we very were talking about this like kiwis it seems like they don't tough. get cold they're tough they walk around when we're freezing i'm wearing like a north face and like two <laughs> pairs of pants and they're wearing shorts like going on a jog the, the shorts like, like above the tiny the, shorts above the knee yeah and like no every and my teammates do it training they're wearing shorts with no like tights on or anything mm -hmm. and i've got tights shorts pants gloves snood it is on unreal neck. tell me your secrets yeah please. i, I want to be warm i hate being cold yeah and like even in houses too because the big thing that i've been told because i've been complaining about it so much like a little baby <laughs> is they're like well we can't have insulated places like with a lot of um materials because it's on a fault line with the earthquake so yeah, the earthquake the does fire come they're here. like a little bit of wood falling on you is better than a loss of concrete and steel and stuff like that i'd rather take my chances i would i would you know what if earthquake comes i want to be warm when i die <laughs> <laughs> i'd rather be warm and die than be oh cold oh my god <laughs> You um would. but no it's it's been a struggle but we definitely need to get a lot of shit from it yeah so this leads us into our next topic though and that's where we're gonna be after this season ends yeah and i feel like all we know so far is that we want to be somewhere warm mm -hmm. and we want you to have a contract yeah so as for the off season that's always kind of up in the air yeah so a lot of people always ask us like what's our plan like where are you going and yeah. Like, the general the very light i mean as a professional soccer player you have to have like it's never a plan it's like this is what the plan is like i don't know how to explain it. it's like this is what we're planning on doing but something He's might come doing up air quotes right they can't see you oh do yeah that. i'm doing air quotes right now planning. this is what we're planning on doing but something might come up and that might just completely go out the window yeah so we try to not get our hearts set on certain plans i've learned the hard way mm -hmm. but the general plan is after the time is done in new zealand to take like one or two weeks you know i always like to take one or two weeks after a season ends to decompress let your body recover just rejuvenate mentally and physically and you know maybe go on a vacation over down to huh eat some crepes eat some crepes <laughs> um we'll maybe go to a vacation down the south island see queenstown because we've heard great reviews about that maybe we're thinking australia maybe fiji depending on time fiji. depending on my body fiji um but you know mainly work our way back to america and then in off season the general plan is to maybe have like to train and get ready in off season in san diego and get like an apartment month to month or a airbnb mm -hmm. and then also i'll be talking to my agent trying to get with a team to train with maybe in the usl before that time like in september try to get with a team just to train for a couple of weeks so the coaches can see me um but again you never know that, that yeah could be, i think no a teams lot of people a lot of people probably think that you're hiding things most of the time, like during season or even off season, yeah. they're like, where are you going? Tell us. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, no. <laughs> if I knew, then you would know. You would ask so many times, like when we first, like this would happen. You'd be like, so yeah. what's the plan? You kept on asking me, like, what do you see yourself? Like, wh where are you going to be well, next see, month? my big thing was like, how do I plan my life around you when yeah. you can't plan more can't. than a week ahead? Yeah, right now I can plan my life out till August, August 12th. Yeah, August 11th. August 11th August is your last game. August 11th. That's, That's how far I can far plan my life. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, so <clears throat> it's tough, but and that's the general plan. And then hopefully, I want to get a, a contract or do some trials or something in the USL for the next season. Now, if that doesn't work out, um, I'll have to start extending my reach into maybe Scandinavia, maybe Australia, yeah. maybe Asia. I don't know. We're, we're it's going to come down to a lot of things and connections and opportunities that pop up. Yeah, and I think that's a good lesson too for everybody else trying to go pro i guess listening to this but yeah. you always have to keep your options open and have like multiple backup plans multiple. because even if he gets a contract he's still talking to coaches yeah you have to because one thing you know about that multiple options is because all of them can fall through yeah when i was 
just had dropped out of college. I was talking to two Asians that both said they had contracts lined up I for me. I remember this. I was like, I had sounds good. a team in Oklahoma, like it was Oklahoma City Energy in the USL that said they were going to bring me out to preseason. They were very interested in me, got glorious reviews from me. Um, I had Sacramento Republic that wanted to bring me in for uh, preseason or a trial. And then I also had, oh, uh, Iceland. I had Iceland, a team over in Iceland that was like, we want to bring you out. So that was like five opportunities right there. And within a span of, I'd say, two weeks, four of them completely fell through. Mm-hmm. And then I went to Iceland. I um, They were com- actually only had one foreigner spot and they signed the other foreigner that came in on the trial with me. So then right there, all five of my opportunities disappeared. And I was in the shitter. Mm-hmm. I, had, I had, had no idea what to do. I was so scared. But that just shows like, you think you have five. So I was like, oh, I'll get a contract. Easy. You know, I got five opportunities and then none of them worked out. Well, even too, like on your team, on all of your teams, you've been like best friends with people. And then the next day they're just gone. Yeah. Like you don't know when your contract's going to be cut mm-hmm. too. You can be, you get brought into the office and go, you know what? You've been traded. You've been traded over this team. Yeah. Get all your shit and go to Oklahoma <laughs> City. Like yeah. you're done. <laughs> yeah. And, and if you have a girlfriend that has a stable job, they're working with you, a dog in the apartment. You either separate for that time or you they quit their job they go with you (laughs) it's it's nuts yeah Yeah. so it's very nice that now you have a job that can kind of go wherever um but yeah so i mean if people watching this you really are curious this is the truth this is what is happening i don't know i have no idea it's just about being optimistic (laughs) while you go through following these opportunities that pop up and really just going with the flow you know yeah. going with the flow but not sitting back and letting opportunities come to you while also like i'm reaching out to my agent You're i'm sending my proactive. agent my highlight stuff you know i'm contacting my teammates being like hey how's the team looking over here what are the opportunity or what are the chances i could come in train with you guys just for like a week or two in september mm-hmm. just doing stuff like that that's how these connections are made that's how you get these opportunities but it's a it's a crazy life that's why you have to be so passive like that and not stress out i wouldn't be able to do that <laughs> definitely my sister would make it two days as a yeah, pro no she'd hate it yeah so that's going to wrap up the very first episode of the against all odds podcast i hope you guys enjoyed it um again give us feedback on this please yeah if you have any suggestions for future talking points or questions you want us to talk about them definitely let us know Mm -hmm. because our plan is to keep this a very casual conversation not completely about soccer i don't want to be talking about for 40 minutes about how to improve your left foot you know Mm -hmm. i want this to be more about a behind the scenes of our life behind the scenes of a professional soccer player's life talking about some soccer points answering some questions but talking about your life talking about my life and then maybe just even talking about points that don't have anything to do with you know just a random point so let us know what you guys think keeping it cash yeah keeping it very casual also, if you guys know, we did say like a couple of bad words. Sometimes this is going to probably be a PG-13 podcast because uh, on it's YouTube, raw. On YouTube, we both try to really... Um, be very clean. Yeah, we try to be really, really clean. But if something slips out on here, then I mean... Well, yeah, we'll let it go. But I hope you guys liked it. Again, give us feedback. Please give us feedback. What you think, what you want to see in the future ones. Mimi, thank you for sitting down and talking with me. Thank me for coming and talking with you thank me yeah thank me thanks for having me shelly on my podcast all right guys that's gonna wrap it up this is against all odds see you the next one Mm -hmm.